Our second speaker is an urban planner and housing advocate by day and a partner, professor, and mother by night. She's passionate, passionate about YYC, planning, bringing back the love, and always leads with her heart. Please welcome Dr. Teresa Goldstein. Hi, everyone. I have a confession to make. I love housing. I love cities. I love urban planning. I love them together. I love them apart. And ever since my 12th birthday, which is when we went to a field trip to City Hall in Hamilton, Ontario, I've been obsessed with cities. And I don't think I'm alone in that feeling. Ask your friends where they grew up. Look to your neighbors and their eyes will light up when they talk about their street. Other than family and maybe sports, I would bet that nothing compares to the feelings of attachment to your neighborhood. And this is me, Teresa Goldstein in front of you, an eight-year-old Teresa and two-year-old Valerie on our street, a street that I grew up on, a street that I loved, and a street that changed together and loved each other as we changed. And it felt incredible when my friend moved from that three-story walk-up, the brown one, across the street to the duplex. But something changed along the way. This change, these emotions, they felt like a shift. A shift that happened between that first generation and the second generation of my neighborhood being put together. That idea of positive emotion turned to fear. Adding something new, or someone new, was seen as a loss. And as an urban planner, I'd end up in a gym or an auditorium. And my council would instruct me to do more engagement and less engagement and more taxes and less taxes and loss of character and too much policy and more. You see where I'm going here. And where did that leave communities? Where did that leave all the love? This bothered me. Did you ever find yourself in a situation where your brain was telling you something? That's the rational thing. But your heart was telling you something else. That's the love thing. And that love thing is the thing that we try and rectify with the brain thing. But where did that leave communities? This got me thinking, was I missing something in myself, in my practice, that continued to have all these feelings, these feelings that emerged together, where my heart was trying to reconcile with my brain, and I was trying to connect with people and communities in ways that they couldn't. And as humans, we want to feel needed. We want to feel like we're part of something. We want to feel connected to each other. And when our cities change, which they will, we feel a sense of loss. We feel a sense of scared and fear and that our love may be under fire. And I understood this, but I also served the city. And I spent 20 years in public and private practice. And I want to tell you today, outside of my circle of friends that don't want to hear about urban planning anymore, <laughs> or always ask me about the traffic problem at parties. <laughs> Families are different and we're different and our generation going forward wants different things and the world's changing and I couldn't step away from this feeling. And it felt like I could never show up at the right time. I was the designer and the implementer of the process and I felt like this. I'd show up to communities and say, hi, I'm here. Take notice and participate. And communities would say like, why are you here? We don't understand. We want to be there, but we need to build empathy. Teresa, why are you talking about empathy in cities? Empathy is when we can put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. So what if I asked you about the change that's happening in your neighborhood right now, but you actually were the person that was causing the change because maybe the housing didn't work for you anymore. That's empathy. That's the thing when I think about empathy in the city. It's the key to connecting deeper and this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to connect deeper, to demystify the other those other people that lived and moved in around the corner to get back to that feeling of love, the love that I felt at the beginning when my friends moved across the street and joined the duplex on the other side. We're literally lining up for love. <laughs> I wanted to explore this. I wanted to have these feelings deeper, deeper with my friends, but deeper with my community and imagine a day. So like any good urban planner, <laughs> I began to connect the dots, the dots in my community, what the larger picture looked like, but I also want you to connect the dots in your community and how you fit into it. And as humans, we're together in this system 
And we need to be open to making these connections that might not look the same. They certainly won't look the same, but they will look different in a good way. And reawaken, jump into the early days. I had gone on to autopilot for many years. And they said, Teresa, why are you doing things the same way but expecting different results? And I said to myself, yeah, I forgot to ask why. How many times have you forgotten to ask why you do things the same way? Prioritizing relationships. I had forgotten how important relationships were to me and to my practice and to my community. Ensuring that this idea of maintaining relationships is critical. We forgot how to do this for four years, I think, three and a half, but we're back. Let's do it. But dive deep. This is your responsibility as a citizen and as a human in a community. Dive deep. Grasp the physical surroundings, but also those other layers. Put your pens down. Pick up the phone and have a conversation and stop only answering the emails. Layer yourself. We are made up of many layers, and that doesn't come across very often. And I found that through this exploration of my own love that I found these different layers. And building trust meant that positive emotions came forward, whereas when I felt negative, I'd shut down and I would try and perpetuate that status quo. So I'm going to leave you with, with what I call a no one size solution. Our greatest wisdom lies in realizing that our hearts are our truest brains. Listen to them. The answers will open you up. And really, let us embrace the profound simplicity of empathy and love in everything that we do. It's not about a checklist or a formula. I'd encourage you to listen to your heart as I have. It is a symphony. And remember, in the words of the great late Tina Turner, What's love got to do with it? Absolutely everything.